All right, so now go into the pre-processing. First of all, um, we can look at a so-called barcode rank. So we can count the molecules that are assigned to a certain barcode um, and rank them from all the barcodes that have really few molecules assigned to them to um, having a lot of barcodes assigned to them. I think in this um, picture here it's the other way around. But um, anyway, so you can sort them. You have barcodes that have a lot of molecules assigned to um, in a TANX experiment. So these are actual cells. However, you also have uh, a lot of barcodes um, that have few molecules assigned to it. And the reason is really simple. In a TANX experiment, you have a lot of empty droplets um, where you don't shoot cells into. Um, if you remember the small video I showed um, this morning. Um, this is to avoid doublets. So you want only one cell per droplet and not two cells per droplet. Um, and you have to make a dilution of one cell for every 20th um, droplet to increase a good uh, relation of uh, having no doublets. All right. What you also see when you look at, uh, like, like now looking at the empty droplets, and you have a lot of them, is that they are not entirely empty. So they still have some molecules assigned to them. And um, currently we think that these molecules are creating some kind of background signal. So when these cells do not contain a cell, they only contain molecules RNA molecules that come from the cell suspension. So, and, and when they come from the cell suspension, they create a background that is present in all of the cells. Where does this background come from? Uh, when you treat your cells and uh, make them single, they usually don't like this. So some of the cells um, break up and then all the content of the cell is dissolving into the cell suspension. Sometimes people refer to this as soup. And this soup now makes up a background signal. If you have a strong background signal, then this is some kind of... Yeah, you find um, reads of uh, genes that don't belong to that cell type. We often see this in pancreas studies um, of beta cells. For one, because beta cells produce a lot of insulin mRNAs. So we count up to 10,000 molecules. Um, and if a beta cell produces this many mRNA molecules of one gene and breaks up, you find a lot of these genes also in the background signal of other cell types that have certainly no beta cell expression, no insulin expression. So um, that's why you want to look at ambient RNAs. Um, in order to deal with them accordingly. For example, just remove these genes from your analysis or from parts of the analysis. All right, once you've done that, you can look into uh, several parameters. Um, and usually we do these kind of histograms and draw a threshold where we think, okay, um, everything above or below that threshold is a good cell or debris. Um, and for example, here I drawn, I show you the count depth, so the total number of uh, molecules that you detect. So we usually talk about counts because we count them. Um, and you can create this kind of histogram. Um, and you see you have some kind of an upper tail and uh, you also have some um, yeah, lower tail. You can even zoom in into like computationally zoom in to resolve the lower end regime in order to make an informed decision on where to cut. Um, for some cells you can be really, or for some barcodes you can be really sure if it's a cell or if it's not, but um, like making an exact cut with this um, kind of method is sometimes difficult and sometimes it's difficult to decide. Um, my advice is, if you feel unsure um, where to cut exactly, make a more 
um, lenient approach. So uh, include more cells. So where you say, okay, I'm unsure about those cells, but let's have a look how they behave in the downstream analysis. And if you realize that they don't behave well, so they don't fit in, you can't really make sense out of those, you can easily go back to pre-processing and say, okay, I exclude those. At this point, I have to admit that data analysis is a circular process. And that's why I also think that pre-processing takes about 80% of your time until you're really sure about your thresholds. A different way of looking at cutting and making thresholds is to make these 2D scatter plots. So here we depicted the number of genes versus the count depth, so number of total number of uh, reads, um, and you can see that you have um, these kind of lines here. So sometimes you do have some this kind of a V shape. Um, so that's the V. I just draw it with my mouse. Um, and these cells that are like on this lower regime, so they have a lot of counts. So a lot of um, genes, a uh, lot of um, molecules detected, and they have few genes detected. That's not a fault per se, but it's probably a different cell type. Um, and if you have this kind of, you make this kind of observation in your data, you would like, you probably want to look at a data normalization that takes us to into account. But this is something that I would like to discuss uh, before the third session, how to uh, tackle this kind of cell type specific um, properties. For now, that's it for pre-processing and I would like to ask you to go to the second hands-on session about quality control, cell filtering and gene filtering and of course ambient RNA detection.